precession. What is that? How long is the sidereal year and how short is the tropical year? In order to find out what a sidereal year is, we shall use for now the imaginary center of the Earth as reference and not the Earth's surface. We can see that the Earth moves around the Sun. The distant star is a reference point. A full 360 degree orbit around the Sun, and thus a sidereal year, is completed when the center of the Earth crosses the imaginary line Sun-Star. If the Sun and the star are fixed and the Earth does not precess, then after one complete 360 degree orbit of the Earth around the Sun, not only a sidereal year, but also a tropical year has passed. When in 1952 the International Astronomical Union substituted the tropical year of 1900 for the sidereal year of 1900, its decision must have been based on this fact. We know that the fixed stars, or the signs of the zodiac, slowly change their position in the sky at a rate of about 50.26 arc seconds per year. That again is proof that precession must occur. This phenomenon, as we see it here, is due to variations in the orientation of Earth's axis in space. There are two possibilities to explain this phenomenon. Either the Earth wobbles on its axis, lunisolar precession, or our solar system has a partner star, and revolves around a common center of gravity. In case of the latter, all stars, with the exception of the partner star, precess at about 50.26 arc seconds per year. This corresponds to approximately 3.35 time seconds. That means the sidereal year is about 3.35 seconds longer than the tropical year. It is easy to see that once the center of the Earth has crossed the imaginary line between the Sun and the fixed star, the tropical year is completed, and the observer on the rotating Earth's surface must wait another 3.35 seconds for the precessed reference star to transit. If the Earth were to wobble on its axis, the reference star has not just precessed by 3.35 seconds, but by about 1,223 seconds, or approximately 20 minutes. That is a huge difference. Let us take a closer look at this discrepancy. A full lunisolar precession cycle of approximately 25,800 years would look something like this. Isaac Newton, who coined the term lunisolar precession, was convinced that only our moon has the necessary mass and the right distance from the Earth to cause this phenomenon. He was a genius, but during his time there were insufficient scientific means to either confirm or refute his hypothesis. Despite the inconsistencies of the theory and reasonable doubts by some experts, modern science continues to hold on to the lunisolar precession model. Here we see the orientation of the Earth's axis relative to the Sun during the winter solstice on December 21st. According to lunisolar precession theory, after a quarter precession cycle, or about 6,450 years, the axis of the Earth would be aligned like this. Now, one might ask, what is so unusual about this? That is the way precession works. But wait, it will get interesting. What has changed after 6,450 years of precession? What has certainly not changed is the 360 degree orbit period of the Earth around the Sun. With each tropical year, the imaginary center of the Earth continues to cross the imaginary line between the fixed star and the Sun. There are only two positions that have changed relative to the Sun and the fixed stars.
The first is that the observer on the surface of the rotating Earth must wait about six hours for the Sun and the fixed star to transit. In the second position, the fixed stars have moved about 23.5 degrees lower in the sky for the observers on the night side, and the Sun has moved about 23.5 degrees higher for the observer on the day side of the Earth. Of particular interest to us is the position of the Sun, because it is 23.5 degrees higher in the sky than it should be. As we know, our civil calendar is tied to the equinoxes, and therefore in sync with the 360 degree orbit of the Earth around the Sun. This revolution period is very precise, as it has remained stable to within the millions of a second over the last century. Thus, after 6,450 360 degree orbits of the Earth around the Sun, the axis of the Earth should have remained in its original position and not shifted by 90 degrees to the right. After 6,450 years, if lunisolar precession were to occur, the observer on the northern hemisphere would experience the following paradoxical phenomenon. He looks out the window and feels the spring in full bloom. A glance at the calendar tells him that it is the 21st of December. Ever since the calendar reform of 1582, calendar time has been kept accurate to a millionth of a second. If lunisolar precession were to exist, then after roughly 420 years, our calendar should have been off by six days. But that is not the case. For sure, we would have noticed otherwise. Something is wrong. It is unacceptable that the Earth precesses relative to the stars, but not relative to the Sun. Such a wobbly physics cannot exist. However, this is the phenomenon that is being observed. The equinoxes are fixed, and the fixed stars retrograde by about 50.26 arcseconds per year. There is only one logical and scientific conclusion to explain this observation. Our solar system revolves around another star. Now, you may ask, why has no one noticed this extreme time discrepancy before? Simply speaking, the calendar is being kept accurate, which means it is synchronized to the sun. The huge difference of about 20 minutes per year is transferred to the night side of the Earth, since no one is going to notice it there. Who really cares if the fixed stars appear a few arc seconds lower in the sky each year? And a 20 minutes longer sidereal year, which no one uses anyway in practice, exists only on paper. <laughs>